2023 is ongoing, but it has ended for Ghana. The Black Stars did not shine yet again at the Africa Cup of Nations tournament. The early exit broke hearts, but the dismissal of team coach Chris Hutton may have appeased fans only for now. Deeper questions about form and performance of the pumped male national team remain. As the GFS searches for a new coach, we ask, is it time for tough love for the Black Stars? We also explore the age-long problem of beneficial ownership and interference by the GFA. All of this on Hot Issues. Our guest today is a man who wears many hats, all of which are very relevant to the subject of discussion. Many years back, he would have been in the middle of the collective national mourning after Ghana's disastrous showing at the Africa Cup of Nations from the commentator's box. He later became a key figure in sports policy issues of the country as sports minister and through his role as member of parliament for Odojojojojo has had strong views about how to move sports, football and the country forward. So how do we as a country fix football? How do we fix black stars and what role has government through the sports ministry to play in all this? Is it fair that the coach carries the can for major tournament failures while those who make the decisions at the Ghana Football Association simply stick around for more? My guest today on Hot Issues is Neil Lante Vanderpoy. Thanks for sitting with us on Hot Issues, Honorable. Thank you. The dry spell is on. We still don't have an AFCON glory. Uh, national team, senior national team failed yet again. Did you see this coming? Yes, I did. And let me frank with you, I was not confident in the Black Stars achieving anything. Uh, critically speaking, I, I followed their preparation towards the tournament and I saw that they were ill-prepared. There was no way they could achieve anything with the sort of preparation we've had. Somebody would say, but the other teams also had the same level of preparation. No. So many teams had played together for long. So many teams have been in camp for long. They come into camp, they break, they go to play for mm -hmm. their teams, they come back into camp. Our team never had that serious camping. Um, and as such, just bringing people together four days, five days to a tournament would not achieve the results. Um, people sometimes don't look at it, but all the teams that we had in the past, that won as the AFCON, were teams that were camped over a period, mm. they were built over a period, they had a period of discipline, they had a period of team building, building and wedging their chemistry together, knowing themselves and also psychologically and mentally getting themselves bonded for the tournament. You, you, you don't go into a tournament, especially when you have players coming from the, all parts of the globe, you don't, you don't go into a tournament expecting to achieve anything when you just gather the boys a week to the tournament. All the countries that are playing, almost all their teams, some of them play in Europe, but they are players who have been together with their colleagues for some time. If you take the Egyptian team, some of them play outside, but this team has been together for a long time. Morocco, the same. All the countries, even Cape Verde, the same. So when we have a circumstance where our team has not been a team that we build together for long, mm. we need more time to come. Yes, you need more time to stay together, to learn from one another. Some of these boys were wearing our national jersey for the first time. Some of them have never been to Ghana before. Some of them have never even been to West Africa before to be able to get themselves acquainted with the environment and the weather. So there were a lot of things that were really... Uh, let me say, we're, we're going to be right. the sort of hurdles in us achieving the sort of objective that we expected to achieve. But as usual, they gave us all the hope. They build up expectation, and the expectation has turned to frustration. Indeed, and indeed. Ghanaians are very disappointed. Indeed. This issue about uh, bond between the team, could it have been a matter of scheduling? Yes. At this point. You see, when you have a good technical secretariat, they draw a program for the players. You know that Ghana as a country, this is the team we have. But as a group, we, as a country, we will not be able to have our team after today. We've used over 100 and something players over the period of three years. We will not be able to have our team if we're 
we, we, if we had our team, then we can say that you go and play your match in Europe. As soon as you break, you come down, we're going to camp. After, after come, when the season opens in Europe, you go back. As soon as you break, you come back. But because we don't have a team, we'll be doing what I can't score for Frekobo. So when we have a match, you just call this one, call this one, call this one, put them together, play the match. After the match, they go back. We will not be able to structure our preparation for any tournament in the past years. And that's why we are failing. I want to pick, piggyback on you know, youth football and the GFA investment into that. Why, why is it the case that there would appear to be seeming disinterest or you know, lack of investment in that area? Because people are interested in their players that they are managing. Mm. The people, a lot of the people at the FA are also, you know, that is one of the subject areas I think critically Ghanaians must talk about. You see, the world over, when it comes to football, there is clear dichotomy between management of clubs, management of FAs, management of footballers, agency, and also scouting. In Ghana here, we have people who are in football administration at the national level. Mm -hmm. They find themselves either in the management teams of any of the national teams, the executive council members of the FA. They are into club management at their club level. They are also into player agency. They are also into technical team management. So you have one person, he's, he has a club. He's in the FA. He also managing a player. He's also an agent for that mm -hmm. player. If that player is in a competition with my player, there is no way my player will get the opportunity to enter the national team. Right. Because he must seek his interest. So he will wish that his player is featured and my player is not featured. You understand? So because of that... Irrespective of who is more qualified. Yes. Irrespective mm -hmm. of who is a better player. Better player. Mm -hmm. His interest is his money. Let's the boy play for the national team. His market value goes up. I'm able to sell him. Mm. Or I'm able to work out a better opportunity for him in his next transfer. So, and I will get money. So they have that strategy there for themselves. And not the national interest. So when the emphasis is on their players... Why would, I, why would they waste their time in thinking about building a youth, national youth teams? Mm. Because at the end of it all, some of these people, they're also part and parcel of those academies, private academies. Right. So they are interested that if there's a good player who will be in a national youth team, they'd rather send him to their academy. What, what and could we've be had the... so many mm. players coming to us and complaining that they said, I should go and play this team, else they won't call me to a national team. I should go here, or they won't call me to a national team. You understand? They, they even force, induce, coerce players to join their teams mm. okay. before the players are called to a national Very team. Well. So, someone will say that is an age-long problem. And so I, I want to find out what the difficulty is at the ministerial level in dealing with that. Uh, the politicians don't have the goodwill, they don't have the power, they don't have the heart, they don't have the, the, let me say, the boldness to be able to resolve this problem. And I think that this government has been in power for long. And after 2017, when the tragedy, we start suffering the slump, somebody should have been awakened to say that, look, no, there's something going wrong with our national team. We're spending money. We are wasting mm. money. We are not getting the results we deserve. Ghanaians are not happy. Mm. What do we do? You see, let me be frank with you. If you're going to manage football in this country with kids' gloves, you will not achieve results. You need to be hard. Mm. You must be able to say it as it is. Because it's about people's passion. People die mm. sometimes when we lose matches. People get heart problems when we lose matches. People's life becomes stress when we lose matches. So 
when you're sitting there, you, you should see yourself as being given opportunity to save lives, mm. to keep Ghanaians happy. Right. Because when things are bad in the economy, when things are bad socially, politically, it's football that galvanizes us. So the sports ministry must decide that, look, these are difficult things we have to do. These are difficult decisions we have to take. Yeah. But we have to take them in the interest of Madagascar. And, and, and that, that got you in, a lo in some trouble well, uh, I, while, I have, while you were I, there. I have, we'll I have had my own. We'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> we'll talk about that. But, but I want to understand, uh, in your time, did this problem persist and what was done uh, yes, then? Yes, it, it was. It was. Let me, let me say it was. Uh, it, was uh, it was there. But you see, the level has gone up a little. Mm. I had my problem with the FA people uh, about the way they were handling the national team. This issue of personal influences, personal interests were there. But you see, I, I, I didn't have much time. When I went to the ministry, there were a lot of problems that needed to be solved, like outstanding allowances to the black mm. queens, the black princess, the black maidens. At the time, they even went on a very serious demonstration, going naked in a hotel. You know, it was too much of an embarrassment. So we saw how to run. And then secondly, I said, look, my motive is also at that time to be able to make the other sporting disciplines feel that they are also part and parcel of the ministry. So I try to create a relationship with those other. So my interest was to tackle football in such a way that we minimize the amount of money that we spend on football to the detriment of the other sporting disciplines. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to resolve that first. Let people understand that one, when you get opportunity to play for our national team, it's a privilege, it's an honor. You should, cannot hold the country to ransom mm -hmm. for giving you that platform to show your talent and to tell the whole world that you are a footballer. Because if we don't give you that platform, that national platform, mm. you will only be playing in your club. I see. Well, and so many players are playing in clubs in Europe. So they are playing in better clubs than what our players are playing in. Their only ambition is to get opportunity to, to play for the national mm, team. And in the past, mm. the players play for the national team. Players play for the badge. They play for the flag. But today, it's money. What the hell does it make for government to approve $30,000 as bonuses mm -hmm. for players for qualifying to the next stage of the competition? Does it make so sense? So that player, as soon as it, it doesn't make sense at all. In fact, to me, the ultimate objective of coming to a national team is to play for us to win the cup. So even if you do not qualify for the next round, your bonus should even be reduced. You understand me? Because the reason why we've called you is to win the trophy, the ultimate. So why should I get you money when you're moving towards the ultimate? Get the ultimate, and that's why I'll give you money. Right. If you're not able to get to the ultimate, then you don't even deserve anything. You understand me? So... I thought that that was where we're getting to after I was able to cut down on the budget mm. or the amount of money that was being spent on blasters. We were spending close to $1 million on every blasters match. I see. As a country. I want us to talk about budgets when we come back. Don't go away. We're discussing sports here on hot issues, specifically football on the back of Ghana's disappointing showing at AFCON 2023. With me here in the studio is former sports minister Edwin Neal and Tay Van der Poy. Thank you once again for uh, your patience in the program. But uh, let's talk about that one minute. You, sa you said you, your time, you were able to bring it down to $1 million or cut no, it back? It, it was, mm -hmm. was $946,000 mm -hmm. for a match. Right. And then the CD, CD equivalent of almost about 500,000 Ghana cities. So I look at the budget. And I said, no, this doesn't make sense. In a country where mm. people still need water, people cannot take care of um, their medical bills and all those things. You know. So I went through with them, mm -hmm. with my directors in the office, with the support of His Excellency, the President, John Ramani Mama at that time. I discussed with him and we were able to slash the budget of the, of, of the Black Stars mm. from $946,000 per match 
to about five hundred thousand dollars. I see. And then uh, we're able to also slash down the city equivalent to almost about three hundred seventy thousand Ghana cities. We did this so that we could save some money to take care of the other sporting disciplines. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, Ghana was doing so well in weightlifting, in volleyball, in hockey, but they were not getting any support. Mm -hmm. Boxing, for example, was not getting any support. Because two, three blaster matches totally take out the total budget of the ministry. I see. So always the ministry was in debt. We always have to go back to the office of the president and get some money to take care of the allowances outstanding for the other teams. You know, the, if the 900,000 was for all the national teams, fine. But it was only for the Black Stars. And for a match. And for a match. So you have, you have a debt for the meteors, the queens, the princess, and the rest. And, for a, and what they were doing, what was even much more sickening to me, was the fact that almost all the players were traveling on business uh, first class tickets. So if you have four players in America, they are coming down on first class tickets. So, and the first class, you know, every ticket has a range. Depending on the, L, uh, the airline or the travel uh, agency, you could get it. So you could be in first class mm. paying $2,000. I could be in first class paying $4,000. True. You understand? But they would go for the topmost figure, mm. maybe $4,000. I see. But in actual fact, they may have paid $2,000. I see. So, so while we are on the subject of budget, what goes into uh, deciding how much a player gets as bonus? You see, as a nation, we've not been able to take a decision on how much or what constitutes a bonus or allowance for footballers or to sportsmen in nature. How, we, must, we must come to a time where we say, look, playing or competing for the nation is this. So at any level, if you are an athlete, and you win a medal for the country, this is how much we give you. If you're a boxer and you win a title, this is how much we give you. Win a gold. This how... So that it becomes generic and uniform. Mm. It becomes, the everybody knows. So when I'm, a, I'm an athlete and I'm going to run for Ghana, I know that if I'm able to get a gold medal, a silver medal, a bronze medal, this is what I'm entitled to. But we have a situation whereby somebody goes to win a gold medal, he doesn't get anything. Somebody plays hockey and wins the Africa Cup of Nations for Ghana. He doesn't get anything. He's only paid the per diem that was approved for him when he was in camp or for the tournament, but he doesn't get anything. But a blaster footballer plays one match and he's being given $30,000. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Great total discrimination among the sportsmen. Indeed. So we need to determine and say, look, for Ghana now, if you are called to a national team, wherever, whether it is boxing, athletics, swimming, hockey, this is the amount of money we are going to give you as per diem. This amount of money we are going to give you as allowance. This is what we are going to give you if you win a medal, a gold medal, mm -hmm. or if you win a trophy, if you win a silver medal, if you win a bronze medal, this is how much you are. So it's determined. So at every level of our sports, everybody knows how much it gets. So the, the hockey player knows that the footballer is not getting more than him. Right. The but, boxer but, knows that he's not getting more than the hockey player. That sounds good. But the fear some will uh, entertain will be the fact that some good hands will look at the money and say, I I'm worth more than this. I can't, I can't do this. Every, nobody is worth more than the other as far as sports is concerned. You understand? We've all been given a talent. God has given me a talent in football. He's given you a talent in boxing. I'm not better than you. You understand? As we see today, boxing has won more medals and more laurels for this country than football. Mm. Some people, some athletes have achieved a lot for us individually than the whole team. But is the football. investment into the sports the same when you take boxing no, and football? that is where the issue is. Because one athlete goes and wins a gold medal. One boxer goes and wins a world title. Then he's given something. Meanwhile, the footballers go together. We spend 10 times what we spent on these other boxer or these other athletes, and they don't bring anything. I see. You I understand? See. I see. So uh, you, on the we, we, have not given, we have not given any boxer who has won the world title $900,000 before. But we're spending $900,000 on one match of Black Stars.
It and, doesn't make sense. And this 946000 your in your time was paying for other expenses other than, you know, salaries or wages. To this, the, is, this is allowances, to the people. allowances, tickets, preparation for all matches right. and all and, and, and the rest. Okay, so you include the technical team yes, as well yes, and all that. Yes. Just, just for the clarity. Uh, fantastic. But let's talk about the fact that, you know, we know... Uh, the team members are going to be paid thirty dollars, thirty thousand dollars as in bonuses. Um, that if they are qualified for the next stage. Uh, in, indeed, uh, a qualification bonus of uh, thirty thousand dollars would have been paid to each one of them. Meanwhile, um, we do not know the actual budget for Afcon. Why is there some secrecy uh, surrounding the Afcon we know, budget? We know the Afcon budget. W what is it? Well, I I know that the minister. At least, it, uh, it's strange when I hear people saying that the minister says they can only give us the budget after the AFCON. It's, mm. it's, uh, it's, so, so do we know? It's, uh, it's awkward. After the entire tournament or now that we are out? You see, when the Minister of Finance presented the budget to Parliament, in the budget of the Minister of Youth and Sports was the budget for AFCON. Mm. You understand? Yes, yes. Some of us even said that the amount of money that had budgeted for AFCON was too much. How much are we looking at here? It, it, it's almost about, um, I think, 25 million. CDs or dollars? CDs. CDs. 25 okay. million CDs. So we, we felt it was too much. And then we also felt that at this time when Ghanaians are being asked mm. to tighten their belts, Pensioners are losing their uh, dividends and the rest. Uh, it wasn't appropriate for us to spend that much money on football alone. Mm -hmm. Because we also have the hosting of the All Africa Games. So we even argued about that one. But it was a budget. And sometimes the erroneous impression being created is that you don't want the team to be successful. But I don't, I don't see money being the main incentive for success. I, I don't think the Kverdians are receiving anything our players received. Mm. Burkina, uh, Mali, and the rest. I know. You know. We, uh, we pay our players more than the English pay their national team players. We pay our players more than the Germans pay their national team players. And we don't have their kind of money. We don't have that kind of money. We go to them for, 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 for assistance. As I'm talking to you today, the weightlifting team, which we were counting on to give us a medal, have not had their supply of food supplements in the past six months. The boxes have been in camp. They've not had nutritional supplements. They've not had anything. I see. So... And, and every focus I mean, was on AFCON, yeah, wh football. Why? Why? Because it, it's not a football ministry. It's a sports ministry. But it seems a lot of attention is given to uh, f football, particularly the national team, uh, much more than any other Which sports. National team? Particularly the, the, the Black Stars. The Black Stars. And I mean. not the national team yes. because we have so many national so, teams. Indeed, you, you're right. As, uh, as we're talking today, our women are performing wonderfully well. Yeah, but we are not giving them the, no. the same kind of attention. So I'm even asking, what are the incentives? Are they also going to be giving $30,000 if they should qualify for the next stage? Are they going to be giving? If they qualify for the World Cup, are they going to give it $30,000? Because they deserve it. Indeed. So let's, let's put the two side by side. Maybe boxing will be under a different association because the GFA looks yeah. particularly their football. So there is the women's national team. There is the male national team, which is Black Stars. Uh, irrespective of how well the women's national team performs. They don't get anything, they don't get that anything kind of, close to. What is it at the GFA that pays more attention to the Black Stars than, than any other football? Because they, they see the Black Stars as the leading brand. That's what they always say. But That's where it, the money is. Yes. And, and if you go to America... Americans know that they were not doing too well when it comes to men's football. So Americans focused on women's football. In, in, in life, you, you take advantage of the areas where you have comparative advantage. Mm -hmm. So me, I have said that, look, if we think that we can make good with women's football, give the women's football our attention. It's a national team too. 
Let them achieve the success we are looking for. If we cannot win a World Cup with the men and we can win a World Cup with the women, it's the same Ghana. You understand? But if we can't do that, then let's give all of them equal attention so that somebody will not feel that we have been deprived even though we are doing so well. Mm. We have been deprived. Currently, if I were in the GFA, for the next two years, I'm not even going to think about male, male, male football. I'm going to think about women's football mm. because that is where the glory is coming. So let's push a little but bit. Let's motivate how, them a little. How could the ministry intervene in this? What kind of intervention? The ministry is a policy maker. Mm. They take care. They do. They enact all the policies guarding our sports, our football, and so the minister should take the bull by the horn. The minister should be responsible enough to let the GF people sit there and say, look, guys, sit down. You cannot do without government support. Yes, you get some money from outside. I'm not interested in how much you get from FIFA because that is not... But the taxpayers' money that we are spending on you, you need to be accountable. You cannot... The GFA cannot sit there and tell me today they formed a committee to find us a new coach. They've already fired five, mm -hmm. but they are still sitting there. You understand? They should have gone by now. They should have gone by now. You, 45 matches. They've won 16. They've lost 17. And drawn 12. It's not a failure. It's below average. Below average. If they've lost more than they've won. So, in other jurisdictions, <laughs> people should be chasing the GFA now. Mm. Why should the GFA always be sitting there and always push their coaches out? Look, me, I know that there were so many deficiencies with the way Chris Hilton handled the team. But one, let me tell you point blank. Or even if we bring Pep Guardiola, Jorge Klopp, Jose Mourinho, Ancelotti, and we don't change the way our football has been structured, we don't take difficult decisions to deal with people who are benefiting at the expense of our national football. They will fail, just as Q sitting has failed. So Chris's sacking is, is not the solution? It's not a solution. Problem. And me, I would say that the, if I were in government, the amount of money we spent in Chris Hilton, I would rather wish that we don't sack him, but we redeploy him to the, sec the technical secretariat. And then what I would do is to assemble close to 50 of our former players, retired footballers. Say, Chris Hilton, we want you to develop a development strategy for these people to become coaches in the future. So we are building our human resource capacity. Chris Hilton has the connections. He's coached so many teams in Europe and England. So he will be able to get attachments for these people. He, with his experience, can draw the, what, what I call a sort of syllabus for them mm. to go through. He can take them through the training. And those who excel could be attached to our clubs. So that class of all doesn't need to go and get a coach from South Africa or anywhere. As Andikotoko cannot go, do not need to go anywhere outside the country. Because these people will have had the qualification and wherewithal from the sort of training and attachment programs that have been developed by the technical secretariat of the FA. And, they will. and then what will happen is that they will now send something to our local football. It will help in the development of our local game. And some of these people can go to a lower division, from the Premier League to the Division 1, Division 2, and you will see that there will be a total revolution in the technical development of our football in the country. Mm. And when you have those people, through them, we can have a good local team manager. I've used the word team manager because the GFA have benefited from the sort of recruitment they do for our technical side. They, what does that they mean? employ coaches. Okay. The coach's duty is to coach players. Then when the players have been invited, he coaches them and takes them to play a match. We need to have a team manager. The team manager supervises the coaches, manages the individual players, and even the technical people. So that team manager has the responsibility 
of monitoring the performance of each and every player who is a national player. He designs programs for the coaches. And then he, be, he has authority to invite the players, not the FA inviting players for the coach to handle. Mm. In this situation, the FA invite players. Some of the players are invited without the knowledge of the coach. Right. All that he has to do is to put the players together, develop them, prepare them for a match. So the FA people end up inviting the players they are managing and leaving out players who are better than their players. Mm. You understand? The politics of selection. Yes. And we need to cut this. And it will take a very strong hand, strong heart, mm. some boldness to damn the people who will criticize you for interfering with the management of our national team. The national team belongs to Ghana. Right. And if you are the minister of sports, it is your responsibility to make sure the national team works according to the interest of Ghana. It is not FIFA's property. Well, I mean, it, some do suggest that the GFA itself would appear to be a semi-autonomous body. Uh, there have been inst instances where, uh, you know, there have been clashes, and you will know this well, clashes yes. between uh, the GFA and the ministry who have said that they go with FIFA rules. You see, FIFA has no problem with governments intervening in the management of national teams and even running football in their country. FIFA is against governments interfering with the election of people to manage and also the financing of the airface from them. FIFA cannot tell you how to control the money you give the FA. It's the money they give the airface that they don't want government to interfere with it. Because there's corruption there too. Some of the monies they come, some are rebated back to them. Mm, I see. So if governments get themselves involved, they, 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 will be, they will be revealed. I mean, so is, instead of a team manager, we are going for... That's, that's, a, that's an interesting point you made about if government gets involved, they will be revealed. Yes, FIFA. <laughs> Recently, FIFA themselves, they've been, it's, it's, it's been off. People have come out to see the corruption in FIFA. I see. So, uh, despite what you have said, that we need a team manager mm. instead of a coach, mm. you rightly said that we already set up a, a committee to well, look for a coach. In fact, we so have we, we have already it's set the, out we to fail. It's, it's the GFA who have set up a, a committee. The, look, this is a sham. It's a sham. It's a sham because, you know, people are angry. So, they've taken this need deck measure so that the issue of coach, all the issue will focus on the coach and not them, the FA. But people like me will not let them go off the hook because it's the irris irresponsibility that have led us to this situation. It is not just about the coach. The coach may have made his mistakes. The coach will have not done certain... I, I, I sitting down as a technical person, I've done some coaching. Mm -hmm. I've played football. I can tell you, I, I wasn't happy with all the selection the coach made. I wasn't happy with his substitution and everything. But that is him. And that's where I can hold him to. But you and I do not know the problems the coach have had to deal with. The influences on which player to, to, to field. Which player to select. Mm. Which player to go in. Because I don't believe, knowing Chris Hutton, if he has not been submerged by the environment he finds himself, that it is not the Chris Hutton I've known in the past. I see. We'll, we'll halt there, and then when we come back, we'll talk a bit more about coaches and team managers. Don't go away. Welcome back to Hot Issues. Uh, Honorable, so let's, let's talk a bit more about our team and the fact that there are those who feel that some of the players have outlived their importance uh, in the team. What could be the best approach to move on from them as players who are not willing to retire on their own will? When you have a national program, when you have a national strategy, it will not be for the player to decide when to retire or not. You can easily phase that player out. If you don't invite the player, can a player force himself into the team? No. You understand? It means that there are some hands who are, because 
Let me ask you a simple question. I don't know whether you watched the match. If you didn't watch, let me tell you something. As a technical person, I was sitting down in our first match against Cape Verde. Mm -hmm. Our midfielders made 28 faulty passes. 28 faulty passes, our midfielders. They gave, they, 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 at about 15 times, I saw them flat. It means that the three of them were all on one line. Mm. A midfield should always be like a pyramid. You understand? So that one player can take off, but nothing. Is that not the coach's job to have determined? It's the players he has. Okay. For example, if I were the coach, I will not accept the invitation of Inaki Williams until I have the players who can play to suit Inaki Williams. I have no doubt about the fact that he's a good striker. He's a wonderful player. He's a good striker. He's a penalty boss striker. We need that sort of player who will put pressure on the defenders, whose conversion rate is high. He has a good conversion rate. But then he hasn't got the players within the team who can play to suit his style of play. So if you are inviting Inaki Williams, then you should also look at the team you have. Do I have players who can play to suit Inaki Williams? Because I want him to just come and score goals. Do I have the players who will feed him, who will play the balls to him the way he wants it to score? If I don't have, I will invite him. Mm. Look, a Samoajan couldn't have been a Samoajan without Kujua Samoa, Stevie Apia, Sule Montari, and maybe possibly Christian Achu, and the, those players made a Samoajan. Because Asamoajan is just like Inaki Williams. He's a penalty ball striker. He is not the sort of player who can pick a ball and dribble everybody and score. If you have a player and you say the player is your spearhead, is your armor, then you must create the condition that will make him effective. So if you are selecting a player for tournament and you say this is a striker I have, right. this is the way he plays, and he's the one who will score the goals for me, then I need the sort of players that will complement his efforts. Hmm. We didn't have that. Because people do not. And, th and that would have been the job of the team manager. Thank you very much. Okay. Because he's the one who developed the strategy. Right. The technical strategy. S speaking of which, uh, would it, it's a time that we used uh, some of our very best hands who have best foot or feet who have retired to manage the yes, I, I will, I will, I will always go for a local coach. Look, this tournament has taught us that local coaches are doing better. Mm. All the teams that are playing so well, I will, I will always doff my heart out for Alou Sisse. Alou Sisse is not too, is not better than any of our players he played mm. with in 1992. You understand? And and if he's been able to achieve this match with the Senegalese team, we could do say with any of our local, play, local players. What is important is the right person and giving that person the environment. Alou Sisse did not start achieving success. He had some failures, but he's built the team. The teams play for him and the nation. And even when you look at the Cameroonian team, mm. Rugobe Song has just taken the team. Mm. The team is not playing too well, but there is some sort of affinity mm. between the players and the coach. But do you think that you know these players who are playing some of these big big name uh, teams abroad would have respect for a local coach? Well, if you have a coach who is decisive, if the player misbehaves, you are in charge. That's what I'm saying. We must have a manager. Mm. There must be a team manager and a coach. You see, let me say this. Rigobert Song, his manager, when he had a problem with a player, he dismissed the player. It has to take the intervention of the player apologizing in the red before. Today in Manchester United, Jaden Sancho misbehave. Ten acts place. Mm -hmm. Go away. But in this country, we saw what happened to Gazi Apia. But those players, those players are also receiving millions. They are taking millions. Jaden Sancho was signed for 70 something thousand, uh, million dollar, uh, pounds. So how do, how, how do, you know... But he's conforming to the discipline of the team. Pogba, it got to a time 
David Beckham of all players, Yapstam of all players, were asked by Alex Ferguson, if you are in charge, you are mm. in charge. Mm. The player is not bigger than you if he even he, he owns an aircraft. Even without the Let support of the you, GFA? Ali Usise, Sadio Mane makes more money than any of our players. Is he not conforming to the discipline of Ali Usise, his coach? Is Ali Usise not a local coach? The Moroccan coach is a local coach. The Algerian coach is a local coach. The Tunisian coach is a local coach. The uh, Mozambique coach is a local coach. The Kvet coach is a local coach. The Angolan coach is a local coach. All the countries that are performing better than us now have local coaches. So what is wrong with we having? What is important is that let's identify the right local coach. Mm. Let's give him that authority and the environment he, he needs. Let him give, let, let the state invest that confidence in him to have the authority to tell the GFA people that, please give me the time to do my job. You don't pay me. It's the state that pays me. Yeah. Because you see, the GFA doesn't pay the coaches. It's the state that pays the coaches. So if, if I were the minister, I would call the coach and tell the coach, hey, look, it's Ghana that brought you here. Do your work and don't allow anybody to influence you. There have been uh, efforts in the past to attempt to revive um, a, a local league. You know, they, they go up to a certain point and then die out again. What exactly is the reason? I mean, what reading, what analysis have you made as to why our local leagues have not been able to come up, come up to the top as we expect it to be? You see... Let me, let me, let me, not to sound a bit uh, controversial, let me say this. The local league is now virtually in the hands of the clubs and the club owners. Let me take, for example, look at what an individual like uh, the Domahene is doing with Adriana. Look at what uh, Agama is doing with Bechim. Look at what Urandi Abe is doing with Heart of Lions. Mm. For example, Randy, I've been to his place and everything. Heart of Lions are not, but then he has a long term vision. It's not a short sighted project. He has a long term vision. And look at where he's moving. Mm -hmm. I've been in management before with Liberty Professionals. So when we started, we started slowly. But at the time, we had close to seven players in the national team. Because there was that conscious effort to go around the country and pick the best and develop them. That is what is supposed to be done. Our, our, our teams are depending too much on instant glory. Has want to win the league. Kotoko want to win the league. They just, so they are not building the way they should build. I mean, so what should the big picture be? The big picture be each of these teams must develop a youth side. Under 14, under 16, and possibly under 20. That will feed them. In the past, Accra of folk used to have Auras. Apart from Auras, they have Tema has babies, King Harrison babies, has babies, Adraka has babies, and these coast teams feed Auras. And then from Auras, has a folk. Asante Kotoko had Anoche. Apart from Anoche, they have Kotoko babies. They have other coast clubs that feed Anoche mm. and from Anoche to Kotoko. But because today, the teams, things are difficult. Mm -hmm. And it's like all individuals are the ones who are virtually financing the clubs. Two, attendance has fallen to the extent that the clubs don't make much money. So they are not even able to handle their recurrent expenditure. They are not able to nurture the talents the way they should. Accra so folk then was even supporting cool clubs like Accra Babies, King Harrison with mm -hmm. Jesses and things, but they are not. So until we are able to take a decision that look, every team that qualifies for our professional league, this is a seed money we're giving you for development. So those monies will be meant for the teams to develop their younger clubs, the youth clubs. Mm. So from the youth clubs, we can get the talents for our national youth teams. Two, we used to have 
the teams were resourced in the sense that they even have a reserve side. So the reserve side will play before the regular team will come and play. All these are issues that is affecting them. Mm. Three, today, Accra Asafo doesn't get even a quarter of what they spend on the team for a match, let alone to be able to pay salaries in a month. And they have some for other logistics. Mm. So it becomes difficult for them to manage. So sponsorship is key. I see. If we can derive the right sponsorship for our professional league, our division one, and for the management of our coals and other youth teams, it will help. Look, in Europe, whatever achievement they are having, aside, if you go to England today, apart from the Premier League, they have, division, they have championship, division and the rest. All the Premier League clubs also have youth sides under 20, under 19, under 18, who are also playing in leagues. Outside of the club, do you think it's time for a national football academy? Very, very for important. Talent very important. That is where my focus think we should be. You see, we should have a national football academy like we did with the Michael Asins and the rest, uh, you know, when we pick them from the schools and put them in Winneba for years. When we do that, what happens is that they are in schools all right. As soon as there's vacation, they come back to come. They train. They go back. And then what we need to do is to be supporting them by taking care of their scholarships. So once we are taking care of their education, their fathers will be relaxed. Because they need to get their education and they'll be able to. Look, um, there's a young Ghanaian boy now, but let me say a Ghanaian-born English player, mm. Kobe Menu, playing for Manchester United. The father, Felix Menu, invested in him, his education and his football. He went to Manchester mm. at the age of nine. I see. The academy at the age of nine. So, if we can do that, then the private academies will always take the players, the good players. They will nurture them like a poultry farm and then just be sending them out because they want to make money. I see. But if we have a national academy and then we can declare those players no go areas. Hmm. What frosted your relationship between? Uh, the relationship between your ministry at the time and the GFA? It's all about money. The budget. Mm. You know, I, when I decided to cut out the budget, the GFA people were making a lot of money out of the, blast, out of the national team, mm. undeservingly. And I thought that there was a need, so I cut out a lot of things. Is that what they thought was childhood behavior? Well, that's what they said, but I didn't mind. I, I had a focus. And because I had the blessings of my president at the time mm. to do what is right to save our football, I was confident in what I was doing. Looking back, would was, you have done anything differently? I would have done 10 times what I did. And I've done even, if, if we had won the elections, you would have seen more revolutionary drastic measures to whip out the corruption and the undue influences of individuals and private people in our football than we saw. Hmm. You're perhaps the only for, uh, sports minister who openly criticized the Black Stars in, in 2016. The Black Stars are... are uh, calling property. them undisciplined. Yes, the state property. So if they are not doing what... We, we should turn them in the face. Who are they? They are Ghanaians. If I am not doing well, people will criticize, criticize me. Sitting here, if you don't do well, people will criticize you. So, it, why are they above criticism? No. The president is not above criticism. So, why should a black player be above criticism? If we create the impression that they are above criticism, mm. they are gods who should be worshipped, they will continue to sit on our heads. I take it as you don't regret that either. I don't. If I have to say it 10 times, I will. Because you need to draw the attention to the fact that they are not being responsible. They are not being patriotic as they used to, they, they're supposed to be. Other countries don't do that. And they need to, you need to, you see, you need to let a person understand mm. that he's not indispensable. I see. He's not. Look, left to me alone, there are better players out there of Ghanaian descent mm. who are better than the ones who, are called, who were called to come and play in this AFCON. Mm. But they were not called. Look, I can mention one player that I sit here, I say, look, I don't know the reason why he wasn't called. Jeffrey Shrub. 
He plays in the same team with Jordan Ayo. But if you ask me to mark his work rate in any Crystal Palace match, I would say he's the best. Mm, he works so hard. Anytime he has played for the national team, he works so hard. But he's unhappy because of the way he's treated when he comes here. Duncan, playing in Italy, the same. So many of our players, they come, they come to me, complain to me. About how they are treated. How, about how, you know, sometimes you call them and say, oh, why are you not playing, why are you not coming to play for the national team? Look, I remember very well, during the time of Professor Mills, we decided to have Daniel Welbeck mm. come and play for Ghana. We were able to get in touch with the father in the rest. Do you know what he said? The child will not come because of the way we treat our players, because of the way we handle our players. There's no discipline I in see. our team. I see. Our team was not disciplined, so he wouldn't allow his son to come. I and see. I, and so, so, so many other players. Have reached out to you the Look, same way. There was this boy, I saw in him a new Antonio Boy. And we struggled and brought him here. A striker, he was then playing for Leicester City. He was called Odwe. When he came, a player like that who has come, he sat on the bench to the end of the match when it was just a friendly match. It was one of those international friendly matches. Mm. We've seen a Samoajan. So there's no need for anyone to introduce a Samoajan. So why don't you keep a Samoajan? Let this boy play. Let's see what he also got for us. Mm. The next time he was called, he said he wasn't coming. I see. Again, because of the indiscipline. Two more questions before we wrap up. Uh, board chairman of the National Sports Authority accused you of embezzling funds. Me. Uh, for, for the renovation of the new Edubiasi Stadium. <laughs> And he's been in power for seven years, almost eight years. And I've not been arrested. What happened with that? I don't know. You see, he later apologized to me, let me say that. Uh, that's Ban. Uh, he later apologized on um, Happy FM mm. and personally came to me, sent me a message and apologized that he got the wrong information. You see, I was called, I was called to Yoko five times on this particular issue. They said I was seen carrying the bag of money to go and pay the contractor. Meanwhile, the contractor was paid by the ministry mm. check. Why do you think those rumors came up? Oh, just a matter of politics. They want to destroy Neil at that time because uh, he had a very good relationship with the then GFA. And so he thought that he could advance the cause. And also because when they came to have had a frosty relationship with the new minister of sports when he was... When, we were, when I was a minister and he mm -hmm. was a ranking member, you know, we had a very not too good relationship. And I, I have decided that, look, it's about building a nation. I'm not interested in destroying somebody. There are so many things that come to me as a member of parliament, you know. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I decided to take the ranking position for local government mm. instead of sports. I didn't want to come to sports when these things I'm doing, these people will say, he's, he's payback time. No, I'm not the sort of person. I will say it as it is. I'm a very principled guy when it comes to issue of sports. I don't do politics with sports. Because I know that sports, when it comes to sports, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is the nation. So, I, I, that case, I don't know where it got to. I see. The, the last time I was told that, uh, you know, uh, it's not true. The contractor himself came out. To, 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 talk about to talk it. about it and everything you, died. You haven't been on active politics, on the forefront of active politics for a while now. I am. You are? I am. I see. I'm in parliament. We, but we haven't seen you. Yeah, yeah, so, 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 so what I'm saying is that you, you used to be more active let than... Me, let me be frank with you. Uh -huh. uh, the reason why I, I've, I've been passionately talking about football now because it hurts. What I'm seeing, the spectacle I'm seeing hurts, hurts me uh, a lot. That's what I'm talking about. For some time, I decided that if we have a ranking member on youth and sports, I should allow him to do to his do work. Okay. So that I will focus on my local government. Mm. I should not be seen to also be interfering, talking about sports, and taking the shine out of my colleague mm. in parliament who is a ranking member on sports. That's why I didn't get myself too much talking about sports. I, I prefer to do my local government, and I'm happy 
uh, what I've done with local government. Mm. And I, I, once a time we discuss issues, I can go to him, I call him, Kobe, what do you mean? This issue, what do you do? This Can we put up this question to the minister? You know, we do. I see. I go to BT Baba, we talk about sports because he's been a GOC president before. And but So we have a team in parliament which discuss issues. But then I will not be the front person to be talking to about talk sports. About it. I want to focus on what I've been given. The shadow minister. You're also shying shadow, away the from the media. It's not just. It's not just. It's just that. It's not just about sports. Because it's taking you hell to get me here. <laughs> <laughs> You're shying away from the media uh, as well. Well, you know, it gets to a time when sometimes you need to. We we getting old, um, and as such, we're giving the young ones opportunity, um, because some of us went to the background. A lot more people look at Beatrice Annan, look at all these communicators coming up now. They are doing wonderfully well, Samin mm, Jemfi right. and Basentali and all. If we're still there, mm. those young ones will not be known, they will not be seen. So we'll have created a gap and a vacuum. Mm. You see, my mates, Anatete, well. uh, the rest, we've all decided Are to... you coming again in 2024? No, I'm no more coming to Parliament. What was but the I will still be there. that decision? Oh, well, um, I, I have decided that I could contribute better to the national campaign than narrowing myself to the do I see. I want to be part and parcel of what we've done to make John Mahama president again. Mm. Um, I think uh, I have something that uh, God gave me. Right. And, and, and I spearheaded the campaign of the late president to mm -hmm. become president. Mm -hmm. And I want to put the same talent knowledge, resources to use, to use again at the national level. I don't want to narrow myself with the constituency yeah. too. Um, the constituency has been a bit stressful for 12 years. It's not been easy. It's not been easy at all mm. for 12 years. And I think I need to take a breather. I'm not young as I used to be. Uh, I, I am quite old now, uh, getting towards 60. Mm. And I said the energy and the fire it's not there as it used to be. So a younger person should take over, then Indeed. I will support that person. That is why I have taken that We wish you success at the very best. And you too, uh, we wish you the very best wherever you uh, find yourself post-2024. Thank you very much. You're always welcome. And thank you too for joining us here once again. It's a pleasure. Edwin Ni Lante van der Poy is Member of Parliament for Ododo Dio Dio. He's also former uh, Sports Minister, which is why we've been having this conversation with him. I'll see you same time next week here on Hot Tissues. I'm Kemeni Amano. Bye-bye.